Russia has been massing troops near its border with Ukraine for weeks. The prospect of a possible attack has triggered tense negotiations and diplomatic efforts, as the US and NATO have been trying to discourage Russia from taking military action. And that makes it very difficult for Ukraine as well, being uh, almost surrounded. If the West continues its aggressive course, then Moscow, as he has said the president, will take the necessary measures. The stakes are high. The West has threatened sanctions and military deployment by NATO. While Moscow says it doesn't plan to invade the country, it wants to have a say in Ukraine's future. Since Ukraine was invaded by Russian troops in 2014, it has strengthened its own military and many Ukrainians say they're ready to fight. But what happens now also depends on whether tensions between the US and Russia keep escalating. Moscow began stationing troops and military equipment near Ukraine in December of last year, as was documented by satellite images. By early January, 100,000 troops were amassed not far from Ukraine's border. President Putin has long claimed ties to Ukraine, a former Soviet republic, and has repeatedly indicated that he wants it back under Russia's influence. In recent years, Ukraine has sought to join NATO and the EU. Uh, these blocs are not offering membership, but Putin has accused them of turning Ukraine into an anti-Russia on his country's borders. We clearly and clearly understand that дальнейшее движение НАТО на восток неприемлемо. Ну чего здесь непонятного? Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky said NATO has an interest in supporting Kyiv to contain any fallout of a Russian attack that could affect its member states, especially in Eastern Europe. In the past, Russia has resorted to military action to keep Ukraine close. When the country ousted its pro-Russian president in a revolution in early 2014, Moscow responded by seizing Crimea in southern Ukraine. That war and other conflicts involving pro-Russian separatists in recent years have fueled a wave of Ukrainian nationalism, according to some sociologists. Before 2014, a lot of people felt quite positively about Russia. Now a lot of people in Ukraine see it as an invader. One third of respondents in a poll late last year indicated they would take up arms to defend the country if it was attacked. This woman has been training as a reservist in the Ukrainian army for 18 months. I came here to territory defense forces to have the skills to uh, use the gun to defend myself, to defend my family from possible Russian ag aggression. Ukraine, which is the largest country in the region apart from Russia, said it's been strengthening its military and prepared its people to fight. But there's also a fighting spirit that has improved since, since 2014. People who are ready to defend their country, not only in the army, but also volunteers, people bringing help to those who are ready to fight. Still, there are also residents in Ukraine's border regions who say they feel more closely tied to Russia than the West. I think that here, no one the US and NATO have offered their support, although Western allies remain divided. The White House has previously ruled out sending troops on the ground in Ukraine, but has sent weaponry and other equipment to the country, having approved $200 million in such assistance. If they actually do what they're capable of doing with the force amassed on the border, it is going to be a disaster for Russia. Other NATO members also sent arms to Ukraine, while the bloc increased deployments of troops and equipment in its eastern member states. But some European countries like Germany and Italy were reluctant to take stronger action, partly because they are major importers of energy from Russia. Russia will be held accountable. So far, the Biden administration's main strategy has been the threat of crippling economic sanctions on Russia, which hasn't backed down on its demands and continued military activity along the border.